Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode 11 of Let's Play Zelda 2. And we're just gonna go right to the fifth palace now, because we don't really have anything else to do. Not that I can think of offhand right away. We got that heart container, didn't we? I honestly don't remember. It's been a long time since I played this. I probably should have checked, but okay. Uh, yeah, that fifth, the fifth stat palace here, that statue never has anything in it. No iron knuckles, no magic jars, no nothing. So don't get your hopes up. Mm. Yeah, so this this palace is probably like one of my favorites. I'm crap. What am I doing? <laughs> I just like downward thrusted into nothing there. I don't know. It's probably just because of the color scheme or something, or I, I honestly don't know why it's one of my favorites. It just kind of is. That whole atmosphere, the it's kind of like a maze almost. There's quite a few like four-way junctions. And I'm pretty sure at none of the four-way junctions do you, have, do you ever have to go right, if I remember right. Actually, I, th I think at one of them you have to. Okay, yeah. Mm, you can't jump that cliff by back there, by the way. You have to use the fairy spell. Because it's way too high up, man. And then you have to backtrack to get this key. I'm not doing this. Holy crap, no. Uh, can I get on top of him? There we go. <laughs> I hate that when you, like, just barely miss getting on top of him like I did there just a second ago. And you have to, like, keep pressing the jump button to get back on top of him. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I got stuck right between him and the roof. Just hitting him so fast, like, five times a second. That's great. Mm. I can't say I remember my way through this palace too well, though. I remember that the boss is in the lower left-hand corner of the palace, around that area. So... That'll be my guiding principle, I guess. That pee bag can be kind of hard to get, by the way. I have a strategy for it there. If you basically just follow the jumps that I made there, and you'll be just fine. It's a very specific sequence of jumps, I guess, but... Uh, you can get it. Man, two hits for a red iron knuckle? Never thought I'd see the day. Not a level six attack, anyways. A level six out of eight, that's like 75% already, so... Yeah. suppose that's reasonable. Right, and I think we're going to get our in first introduction of these new enemies, the Magos. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I love these guys. Uh, I mean, they're annoying as hell because you never know where they're going to appear, so it can take forever and a day to kill them. Basically, the way you want to do it is wait for them to appear close enough to you and then just downward thrust. But I just love them so much because the fact that they're called Magos and that they're orange, like, it just. And th Mago is so close to Mango. It's just so hilarious. The dramatic irony is just killing me with it. Alright, nothing over here except for the experience on the way, so... Not gonna complain about that, though. Uh, yeah, I think Mago is like a... It's like mage in Portuguese or something, too. So that's what that's based off of, anyways. I like those stained glass windows up there, by the way. It looks like there's almost like... Some kind of, like, demon with two heads in it, and it's got, like, horns on the sides of its head. I don't know. It's weird to describe, but that's just me. I know it's just kind of an assortment of pixels that doesn't really symbolize anything, but I'd like to imagine that it does. Oh, yeah, so you might end up waiting around quite a while, because you never can tell exactly where these guys are going to appear. And I would not recommend like hitting them like a, like that with that kind of attack straight on, because as you can see, they shoot the fire straight forward, and uh, so you're pretty much guaranteed to take a hit if you go at them with just normal attack like that. I mean, you, you can do it, and you can get away without taking a hit, but it is exceedingly more difficult than just downward thrusting them, so... Dude, come on. <laughs> Being a dumbass here. Oh, look, I've got 999 experience, too. That crisp clean one point away from just getting that. There we go. And they give you 200 experience though, so you should definitely fight them if you need the experience and whenever you get the chance, regardless of how long it actually takes. Of course, I'm doing an LP here, so I don't want to waste too much time with it. Uh, oh man, not this crap. I hate this part because you gotta get that key up there, but... Oh, the most efficient way of doing it is just waiting for this whole thing to fill up with blocks. But that's boring to watch, so I think I'll just spare you guys the pain of having to watch this and just cut the cut forward till it's full. It's almost full now, but whatever. If I'm not back in five minutes, just wait a little longer. Okay, I think we're good, guys. 
So yeah, once it's like pretty much full like this, then just uh, start building up a staircase kind of thing to the top. It can be kind of difficult, but if you use your upward thrust just right, you gotta watch out for this guy too. He's a pain in the ass. Especially if he gets you in just the right spot. Crap. I just wanna get up there, man. Dude, I just wanna get up- Stop! These blocks are falling in the perfectly wrong spots. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, it keeps... Jeez. Alright, finally, thank you. Normally I don't take that much damage trying to do that. Because nor that's kind of the whole point of fill letting that whole thing fill up, is that you don't take damage as the blocks are falling in your head, but... I don't know if you get unlucky like I did there, then I guess... Whatever. I guess you kind of don't... E it doesn't even matter, because there's this red magic jar here, so... You can just refill once you get here. Uh, can I do this again? Nice. And now I'm just full on everything, which is just peachy. That's, oh, pff, until you get hit by an orange iron knuckle of all things. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's lucky. I'm gonna cast shield and some life, just so I'm full up. I always feel just like such a... I feel like so just greedy and rich whenever I like cast a life spell, just heal that tiny little pixel of life. It's, it's like the equivalent of having so much money that you just throw it into the fireplace to help fuel the fire. It's like, why? <laughs> Just why? I know no one does that in real life, but in cartoons you see that all the time. With these, like, fat, rich people. Alright, Magos. <laughs> Magos, I don't know. They're just so, such funny names. It kind of reminds me of Magus, though. When you, when, there's, when you say it plural, Magos. It's like Magus or Magus or whatever his name is. In that one game that I can't remember now. Is it Final Fantasy IV? I don't know. I don't have any right to know about it if it isn't Final Fantasy IV, because I've never played that game, or seen much of it. There we go. Oh, this room. I hate this room, yeah, because you can see that skullfish jumping up here. I highly recommend you use jump in this room, and don't, don't do that. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say, don't downward thrust. I thought I was on the platform when I pressed down, so I don't know what happened there. Well, this is my last life, too. I better be careful. Uh, shoot. Yeah, so don't downward thrust, no matter what you do. And you can try to fight these iron knuckles that are along the way here, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're confident in your abilities, which I'm really not. This room kind of reminds me of just Castlevania, with just how hard it is. I don't know. It's kind of cool, though, because those skullfish, they have, like, a red tinge, which they don't anywhere else in the game. So that's kind of cool. Just a nice little added effect to help, make, to help soften the blow of that room, I guess. I don't think there's anything actually over here besides this uh, blue iron knuckle. I'm pretty sure he's just guarding a blank wall. But I'll, I'll fight him just A for the experience and B because I think on the other side of the blank wall you can actually see something and that'll help make it clear of something later in the path. It's really confusing to explain but hopefully you'll see what I mean. Because there is a little bit of a trick for this palace. They throw you for a loop at one point in it. Alright. I think we're just one more hit and we should do him in. I think they only take four hits now. Yes, yeah, so you can see a key there, but there's no way to get to it right now. So just keep in mind that you're always gonna have to look for a passage leading to the right in order to get that key. Because we will need all the keys we can get in this place. Believe you me. This place is pretty monumental. It's monumental and demental. Alright, I gotta be really careful here, because... If I die one more time, it's game over, and I just gotta start back. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, because I've never actually gotten a game over yet. I don't think, anyways. But if you get a game over, then uh, you actually go all the way back to uh, to the place where you started the game, where Zelda's asleep and stuff. So that's a major pain. That You also lose all of your experience when you do that, too. So be careful. There's only one checkpoint in the game, and that's not until the very last palace. So you really gotta be wary about that. Oh, now we gotta wait for the Mago. <laughs> the, I, fe I keep feeling like saying Magu or something like Pengu, you know. These guys really aren't that threatening. I don't know if I said this before, but you can actually block their fire with the Reflect spell. And that might come in handy in a later room, which is a major progress inhibitor, if I remember right. And I'll know it when I see it, I most certainly will. And there's like, the thing that annoys me about it is that there's two rooms that are exactly identical. 
Except, I think I think they might have different enemies in them. But they both have the Magos in them, which is why I get so confused. And one of them you have to go through, and the other one you don't. So, it's just all, it's just all around confusing. I don't know what it is. So you want to head down here, because if you keep going left, then you'll reach the boss, or the junction that leads to the boss anyways. Uh, yeah, I think you want to go this way. Because remember, as I said before, you want to keep heading right, trying to... Always keeping that key that we saw before in mind. You gotta get this key too, of course. Can I... Is there something here? Please? 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 No, I guess not. I'm just gonna bypass this guy, I think. I really don't care right now. Did I just downward stab him and it did damage? You never see that with an iron knuckle. Oh well. <laughs> it's just a fluke, I suppose. That word always annoyed me. Fluke. Because, uh, like, isn't fluke a part of a dolphin, too, or something? And it's just, like, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Because you're saying, like, the dolphin is not beautiful. Or, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's hard to explain my psychology behind that. My re Whoa. Jeez, I don't know what just happened there, but like my head, I just had like a, I had like a miniature headache for like a microsecond, and the whole screen just tilted at a 45 degree angle for me, just like in my, pl maybe that actually happened on the TV, I don't know, and it hopefully showed up in the, I don't even know, that was weird though, it was like that one, uh, like the very beginning of Super Metroid when the screen tilts all the way, oh crap, damn it. That's the worst thing, when they plant the fire right below you as you're doing that, and you have no way to block it. What's really good, though, is when you're downward stabbing one of those bubbles, and it's taking forever, and then the Mago appears right where you're downward stabbing, so you can get the free hits on him, too. Or on her. I'm gonna cast life. Can I cast life? I can't. Crap. So I gotta be careful here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast shield in that case. Just be safe, because I am running low on life here. Jeez, I don't know if I'm gonna survive this. I really don't. <laughs> oh... And it's even more terrifying, because if I die one more time here, I think I'm gonna get a game over. Jeez, I don't- Oh, shit. I've got a blue iron knuckle face. I gotta be careful. Alright, I might go a little bit quiet for this, just because I gotta concentrate on this guy. Because I think even with the shield, in one hit, he'll probably kill me. I'd like to hope not, that with the shield now, he won't kill me in one hit, but... I can't guarantee that. Alright, one more hit, I think. We should do him in. Oh! Oh, no. Okay, it's, it's gotta be a hit after this then, right? Right? Please. Please don't screw me. This is so upsetting. Alright, thank you. Yeah, so this looks like the path before where we just couldn't get past, but if you actually jump in... Secret passage! Yeah, we got the ghostly blocks there. So... Oh, shit. Uh, do I have enough for another shield? Yeah. I'm totally out of magic, so I have to hope, beyond hope, that one of these people drops, like, a magic jar or find a magic jar somewhere along the way here. Even a blue one would be appreciated, because then that would at least leave me enough to cast another magic, or another shield spell. Another magic spell. And also, looking up there, I'm not too far from a level up, and I, I'm pretty sure my next level up will give me a magic upgrade. Shit! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, one hit for sure, and I'm dead now.